ladies, welcome to Coffee with Kelly week 71. Uh, when I filmed this last week, we were watching Olympic trials. Oh my gosh, were they wonderful. And I know we were watching America Olympic trials, but I grabbed my Lithuania cup today because I'm Lithuanian. And so I intend to uh, root them on as well. By the time you watch this, I think Olympics might be over. I'm not sure, but I'm rooting for USA, but Lithuania in second place. Anyways, my topic this morning is about prayer. And I titled it, How Does God Answer Prayer? But actually, it's kind of random things about prayer. So uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. And I thank you for the avenue and the vehicle of prayer that we can commune with you through it. And com not just communicate, but commune and fellowship with you through it. I thank you for providing a way for us to do that. I thank you for uh, the verses and the scriptures on prayer. And I pray that we would be challenged this morning to take a look at our prayer life. And um, Lord, that we would seek to make any changes that we need to make. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, like I said, it's on prayer. So how does God answer prayer? And does he answer your prayer? I'm not sure what you would say to that. When you pray for wisdom or you cry out in fear or you have a need that you put before him, how does he answer you? Now, yesterday, uh, while I was praying about what to talk about, he answered a specific prayer of mine. I don't really need to share <coughs> the prayer or the prayer request. I, I think it was more of a private thing. But he, the point is, he answered me in a way that I didn't expect. I did not expect it and I didn't see it coming. And that really got me thinking how often he answers my prayer in a way that I'm not necessarily looking for because probably it's not the way I want him to answer it. So I miss it. I miss his answer or at least sometimes I don't attribute him um, to answering that prayer request. I love in Psalm 138 verse 3 in the New Living Translation it says this, As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. So in the New King James, that same verse is, In the day when I cry out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Now David was writing those words. And I, I love the, this text. And actually in verse 3, just in that one verse, I know that God is always there for me. He says, as soon as I pray, you answer me. I know that God answers prayers, not always how we think or want. And that God gives us boldness as he provides strength for my soul. But my point in all of that is God gives us what we need, not necessarily what we want. I think I need to be out of a situation, uh, but instead God gives me strength to deal with the situation. How often do I forget that that is a gift from God, that he gives boldness to my soul and strength to my soul to be able to handle a situation. Perhaps I'm handling something hard or I'm afraid or I have no words or I really don't know what to do about something. He gives me strength. Strength to open my mouth, to move my, my feet uh, in obedience. Strength to confront. Strength to love perhaps someone I don't love. Whatever the situation might be, He gives me strength. And you know what? That's usually the answer. Another random thing that David said about prayer was in Psalm 109.4. Again, just a random thought on prayer. Psalm 109 verse 4. He was talking about the wicked and how they had slandered him and all that, how evil they were. And then in verse 4, he says this, In return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to prayer. I love that instead of reviling against them or seeking revenge or God bring, you know, holy fire down on them, but I give myself to prayer. Now, what does that mean? That phrase, I give myself to prayer. So when you give yourself to something or over to something or to someone, that means to dedicate all of you. Uh, if I give myself over to the temptation of eating cake, that means I give up. I'm going to eat it. I'm, I'm going to stop fighting against it. I'm just giving myself to it. Uh, the phrase means to allow oneself to experience something fully or completely, often an emotion. Uh, 
Pam will never give herself over to joy. She's too much of a pessimist for that. That would be in context what that word means. To yield, to submit, to surrender to someone or to something, to immerse oneself in or to dedicate oneself to someone or something. Now think about that definition or those definitions in terms of prayer. Surrendering yourself, immersing yourself in it, dedicating to it, feel it completely, or as David said, giving myself to it. Giving myself. Wow. You know, I thought about it. Maybe that's what the phrase pray without ceasing means. Talk about a challenge. How often do I give myself over to prayer, dedicate myself? I might throw out a prayer or two and convince myself that maybe I've really prayed over a, a situation and about a situation, but giving myself to it? Um, another way you could say it is leaning into prayer. That's kind of a, a trendy word right now. Lean into it. Uh, we are what we love, and I think that just goes without saying, but do I desire to lean into God? And if I do, that would result, or it should result, in the desire to lean into prayer. Because again, that's how we uh, commune with Him, not just communicate, but how we commune with Him. Prayer is both conversation and an encounter with God. It's both. You know, um, St. Augustine taught that all people seek happiness and they attach themselves to the things that they believe will make them happy. I think that's true. That attachment is experienced um, as love. Now, Kim, Tim, K Timothy Keller, about that premise that Augustine, Augustine says, he wrote, the main human problem, however, is that because of sin, we misidentify what makes us happy. As we have discussed before, he says, the result is disordered loves, loves out of order. We either love what we ought not to love, or we fail to love what we ought to love, or we love more what we should love less, or we love less what we should love more. If a man loves making money more than he loves doing justice, he will probably exploit his workers and employees. If he loves his career more than his children or his family, his relationships will break down. The ultimate reason for our misery, however, is that we do not love God supremely. As Augustine famously put it in prayer, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Um, he goes on in that quote, Timothy Keller, the greatness of prayer is nothing but an extension of the greatness and glory of God in our lives. The scripture is one long testimony to that truth. To fail to pray then is not merely to break some religious rule. It's a failure to treat God as God. It's a sin against his glory. And the prophet Samuel said to his people in 1 Samuel 12, 23, Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. By him failing to pray for them, he believed he was in sin. That's amazing. You know, um, if you ask the question, what did Jesus think about prayer? Like, listen to this. Um, Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray. He healed people with prayers. He denounced corruption of the temple worship and insisted that some demons could be cast out only through prayer. He prayed often and regularly with fervent cries and tears, it says in Hebrews 5, 7, um, 5, 7 and sometimes he prayed all night. The Holy Spirit came upon him and anointed him as he prayed. He was transfigured with the divine glory as he prayed. When he faced his greatest crisis, he did so with prayer. We hear him praying for his disciples and the church on the night before he died, and then petitioning God in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Finally, he died praying. What does Jesus think of pray, praying? Oh my heavens. In the book of Acts, it's really prayer uh, that's one of the main signs that the Holy Spirit had come upon uh, people in the heart through their faith in Christ. They broke it into prayer. 
We are taught that prayer should pervade our whole life, our whole day, uh, our being. That's what it means to pray without ceasing. So, prayer is so great that wherever you look in the Bible, it is. And why is that? Because everywhere God is, prayer is. And since God is everywhere and infinitely great, prayer must be all uh, pervasive in our lives. So prayer tunes our hearts to God. It doesn't merely require our petitions, but our selves. Leaning in, inclining our hearts towards, it's bringing Him into every area of our life, all uh, meditating day and night. So all these random thoughts about prayer beg the question, what am I leaning into? What do I give myself towards? My relationships, my hobbies, entertainment, my fun, my pets. I don't know. What should I love less in my life? And what or who should I love more? Is my heart inclined to prayer? If not, why not? Why do I not have a desire to fellowship or pray or commune with God? What is hindering that desire? Oh, so many questions, so many questions to ask ourselves. And I pray that you would take those and challenge yourself and your own heart with those questions today. Do a check-in, do a prayer tune-up and allow God to examine your heart in that category. And remember that sometimes when you pray, what is the answer that you get? Sometimes it's comfort, sometimes it's joy in the middle of the situation, and sometimes it's strength to handle it. And let's remember to thank God for those answered prayers as well. Let's pray right now. Father God, I thank you that you give us joy, you give us comfort, you give us strength, Father, as we pray to you. You don't always take us out of the situation or you know, uh, remove the obstacle that we're praying against. But God, you give us the ability to get through it. I thank you for that. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. And I thank you that in our weakness, you truly are made strong. And so I pray that as we take a look at our lives and examine what do we love too much? What do we love not enough? And, and I know um, those are some hard questions to look at. So I pray that you would answer that prayer as we desire to love you more, love you better, and commune with you more um, fervently, effectively, and consistently. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. God bless you, ladies. I love you, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.